the La Crosse Public Library Archives presents Dark La Crosse Stories, a series in collaboration with the La Crosse Tribune. Dark La Crosse is a suite of programs that feature the seedier side of La Crosse history and also include a downtown walking tour, a trolley tour, and an annual stage production with new content each year. My name is Charles Cabot. I'm a blacksmith here in La Crosse. I can make anything. Gates, elaborate ornamental fencing, tools, you name it. But lately my specialty has been... Nickels and dimes! On February 17, 1910, federal marshals busted into the home of Charles Cabot's parents. The 25-year-old Cabot was huddled over his counterfeiting dies at the time of his arrest. Yes, I was counterfeiting nickels and dimes. And I know what you're thinking. Why bother? With such small amounts, is it even worth the trouble? The big stuff, sure, that warrants high scrutiny. Uh, But I didn't think anyone would notice phony nickels and dimes. I had a great system. First, I made all my own tools. To form a die, two smooth blocks of wood were hinged together. In the inside center of each was a bored out receptacle for plaster of Paris. This was mixed and placed in the hollows, and a genuine coin placed upon the plaster of Paris and the blocks clamped together. When the plaster had time to sit and harden, a silken thread between the blocks was drawn around the plaster, cut the mold down to the coin. The clamp was then removed and the genuine coin withdrawn. The blocks were then clamped together again, and through a small hole from the edge of the blocks was poured the molten metal made to imitate silver. When this had time to cool, The blocks were removed once again and the bogus coin removed. A little milling, a little polishing, and you'd have a coin all ready to be spent. Worked great. Till the feds caught up with me. I later found out they had been on to me for a while and had a stake outside my house for weeks. I was tried in federal court in Eau Claire. I pleaded guilty, was fined $100, and sent to Fort Leavenworth Prison for one year. There's an old, old saying Every little bit helps Just the same as two and two make four And you know that every little bit Added to that Will make you just a little bit more But if your memory's bad and you cannot add, your friends will quickly multiply. But when they start subtracting from the role you had, don't wait too long to say goodbye. If you've got a little bit, hang on to it. It's hard to get a little bit more. Put every cent away for a rainy day and keep a lock on the door it's easy to lend and it's easy to spend but it's doggone hard to get it again if you've got a little bit hang on to it it's hard to get a little bit more and now i'd like to welcome in the mayor of lacrosse tim cabot As of the recording of this episode in summer of 2019, Mayor Cabot is currently serving his second term, and he graciously agreed to talk with me today about this story. Mayor Cabot, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, So first question, are you related to the Charles Cabot featured in this story? I don't believe so. Although there are many, many Cabots kind of, it seems like I get the question a lot, are you related to so-and-so, you know, Cabot? And I'm always like, yeah, probably, but no, in this case, I don't believe I am. And uh, I will back that up in saying, prior to this, I did a little genealogy work, and I took him back four generations, and I don't believe you're related either, unless you're back to the old world. So yeah. uh, th- that's unfortunate for this story, but uh, we thought it was still a fun uh, thing to have uh, Mayor Cabot in here to talk about Charles Cabot. Uh, so were you aware of this particular Cabot family and this particular Cabot story? Before? I was not. I was not. So that, it, really interesting and, and new to me. Great. Uh, as I understand it, your family has been in this area for several generations. Uh, so what are your lacrosse area roots? F- four generations. Uh, basically, I can remember my, my grandparents and then 
uh, their parents uh, being part of the lacrosse community. So for it goes back into the 1800s. Great. Uh, so going forward, thank you for joining us on this one here you about bet. Charles Cabot. But I have some other questions for you here. Uh, as a supporter of our public library and by extension, the work of its archives department, why do you think an understanding of our history is important for the citizens of lacrosse? Well, history is a great teacher, and especially uh, for, you know, when you're trying to work on improving a community and, and uh, you know, having a high quality of life and just all of the things that go into it. I find myself a lot of times going back into history and trying to understand the, the problems and the solutions that, uh, that people before us uh, you know, were working on because I do think it's a great teacher. I, I do really believe that you know, through that study of our history and education, there isn't a problem we can't solve. And I know for us here, uh, we have such an incredible history uh, even before the the city was officially a city and, and the first people or the native people that were here, why this place is so special, um, the the river transportation and then the railroads and, and just, you know, what we have today. So in my mind, our history is something that needs to be honored. We, we need to uh, recognize the people that came before us and the fact that, you know, um, we've benefited greatly from their investments and, you know, all of the the risks and rewards that uh, that were part of their uh, you know time on 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 this place so or in this place, so I think th- that to me is like very very important is is to pay honor to that history to remember that and to recognize the people that came before us because and I kind of joke about this uh, with uh, with folks especially younger generations like my son's generation where. Um, at times, you know, people can kind of figure out like, well, you know, I'm here now and, and it all starts, you know, right now in time. Well, no, actually, uh, these challenges, these struggles, these solutions uh, have been going on since, you know, since there's been people around. And I think history does a good job, hopefully, if we're paying attention to it, does a good job of, of uh, you know, presenting that. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Lacrosse has been recognized nationally for its historic preservation efforts in the downtown core and residential neighborhoods. Uh, do you feel it is important to maintain those efforts at a high level? And if so, why is that important to the continued development of the city? I, I do think that our historic preservation is, is vitally important. It's a reason why we have an award-winning and a vibrant downtown Lacrosse is because of the community efforts to to, again, make those investments to do the preservation. It's unfortunate that we've lost some of that history with some of the, you know, the old buildings, whether it was the courthouse or the post office or the, you know, former city halls that are no longer here today. But I think people learn from those mistakes. And uh, the sense that I get today is that people have a very strong, uh, uh, just part of part of who we are as a community, uh, just a connection to to that history and wanting to preserve and enhance those those buildings, and that's what we've really done. I think a good job of in our community is to find new uses for these historic structures. We've got one of the largest uh, uh, historic districts in the state of Wisconsin that is downtown La Crosse, it's nationally recognized as a historic district. Yes. Yeah, and it's and it's one of those uh, again where we need to celebrate that. We need to talk about uh, you know just what it means for our community today and. and the the jobs and tax base and all of those types of things, but also just the sense of again community identity, the 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 vibrancy and vitality of of what we experience in downtown. History is a big part of that. Great. Anything else you'd like to share uh, with the listeners of this series? Well, I, I am a little disappointed that you know I am not related to to the Charles to a, Cabot. To a counterfeit. Yes, because I because I I mean that is quite a colorful story, and yes. it's hard to believe you know that. He had to serve some serious time in in a federal prison yes. for for that, but I can understand. I mean, you, you can't do things like counterfeiting; that gets you in trouble. Um, it, it, but but it is, I, I, I you know, for our family though. Again, just the uh, the in, in maybe some ways, I'm not maybe blood relative, uh, but the name because you know I've got a lot of history of tavern owners and 
Uh, I hear stories about even my own grandfather. He was kind of a, a rough and tumble kind of uh, character. So sure. I feel a connection to Charles Cabot, even though I'm not totally related. And we did find, and just as a just as a resolution to the Charles Cabot story, he served one year in federal prison in Leavenworth. Uh, he did come back to La Crosse. He lived here. He remarried. Uh, he divorced right around the time he was caught, either before or right after. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did have one son. Um, and both he and his second wife lived uh, in La Crosse in the in the Hood uh, Street area, the Ninth Tenth Hood Street area. Which there were a lot, of, a lot of cabots in that area. Yes, and so w- whether you were related or not, which we believe you were not, uh, his family and your family were very close, yeah. living close together in that neighborhood uh, to the end. And he did die in 1937. Um, is buried here. His wife died very shortly after him uh, and buried here uh, as well. So uh, that was the last final code I wanted to put on that story. Last thoughts, anything, Mayor Cabot? I just, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the, uh, again, the the series here and the focus on uh, lacrosse's history because I think it is, it it has something to teach us even today. And uh, I appreciate uh, the library and all the partners' involvement in this. It's great. Great. Well, Mayor Cabot, thank you for taking the time to be part of this episode of Dark Lacrosse Stories. And thank you to everyone for listening.